Uh, this is the computer on. This is the BIOS. Um, I went into this by pressing F8 when the computer turned on. Uh, sorry, I couldn't show you that part. It's not really that amazing. But the one thing I want to show you is around the menu. Uh, as here you can see, SATA 1 not detected. You have six SATA slots inside the hard drive. Inside the, on the motherboard, excuse me. And you can actually change this to whichever you want to be detected first. As you can see, SATA 1 is all, usually always detected first. SATA 2 has the, the DVD drive, and SATA 5 has the hard drive. So you can see I was a little off, but it really doesn't matter. You can change which one's loaded as well later on. We're back on the main screen. One trick I wanted to show you is that you go into advanced BIOS feature. You have the boot sequence on there. You press enter. It'll tell you what it wants to boot. Here it has the boot as the hard drive. I don't want the hard drive because it has nothing inside. So I'm going to change this into a CD drive. It'll load the CD drive first. And then here I'll just change it to the SATA drive. And that's it. That way when the computer first turns on, it'll start from the CD drive and in this case it's helpful because I'll be installing Windows with it and that's what I'll be doing now. Make sure you do this and then you do save and exit setup. Don't click exit without saving, it'll just undo anything, everything and you'll just have to start it all over again. Excuse me while I get the Windows 7 CD, put it in there and start installing. Okay the CD is inside and then click save and exit, save configuration, changes and exit setup, click OK and it'll reboot. Let it reboot. See, this is the beginning that you missed. As you can see, Windows is loading files. It's loading directly from the CD drive, not the hard drive. Since the hard drive is empty, this is the best way to do this. If you have a flash drive, you can use that as well. If you have a floppy drive and so you have an operating system on there, you can use that as well. And while this is loading, we have nothing to do but wait. Uh, I got through the initial load up. It's still starting. Uh, it's still take a while. This is. I'm not sure if you need to see this, but I'm going to go through this anyway. This is uh, Windows 7 loading. Just click next. You do install now, and it'll just start. Uh, this can actually take several hours, but I'll be cutting part of the video out so you don't have to sit through all the bar loading and everything. You'll just do it next. Seems this um, custom install new copy. You can do this here. You can uh, uh, welcome back to this screen. I had to actually go back to my Windows XP and format the hard drive. Uh, it was a wonderful waste of time, but it was my fault for forgetting to format it when I was testing it earlier, but I didn't know that Windows 7 had a new thing that stops it or protects it from allowing anybody else to to record over a dynamic drive, so I can format it directly. But here uh, you can add new, um, new partitions. Uh, let's say this is 953 megabytes, right? Let's, let's uh, leave let's say 100 gigs 100 megabytes 100 gigabytes actually there we go there we go this is the system reserve the windows 7 created this this is the hard drive that i just created 97.6 you have another one that's 80, 833.9 gigabytes. In total, they all equal to around one terabyte. Uh, you can add more partitions if you want. You can add maybe a C drive, D drive, M drive, N drive, or whatever you want. It really doesn't matter. It's just to show you that you can format it more. Uh, I'll just click on the bigger one. I'll keep this one there for um, backup. I'll keep this one there, and I'll select next. Copying Windows files, uh, it's going to expand Windows files and everything. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to pause this video. It's going to take a while, and I'll come back to you. Uh, the initial setup finished. Uh, the system just rebooted, and as you can see on the screen, so setup is updating registry settings. Uh, these are the next steps of the installation. 
so I'll just follow that. Just set up a starting services and it's completing installation. Once this is done, the computer should be fully functional. Uh, this is basic operating system installation. Same thing can be done with uh, Windows XP, Windows Vista, you have Linux, you have other operating systems as well. They all function and install similarly, but the hardware will, will still be the same whether you were installing XP or Linux or Windows 7. So once this is done, the computer will be fully functional. I'll show you how it works uh, once everything is complete. So we'll be right back. Uh, there we go. We're going further into the setup. Uh, it says type in a username. I'm going to put Nasmus. Uh, type of a PC. Nasmus PC. Uh, let's do Rose. Oh. Rose. I'll just put Rose then. Click next. You have a type in a password recommended. You can put anything you want. Uh, next. Doesn't really matter. Product key automatically activate Windows when I'm online. Uh, if you if you don't put a product key right now, it'll give you a 30 day trial. Uh, that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to put in the product key later on, actually, just not now. Uh, use recommended settings. Set your time zone. I'm in Eastern Time, 5:13. Uh, looks about right. Windows 7. Windows is finalizing your settings. Once this is done, you're not actually done. With the motherboard came a CD. It has all the hardware drivers, uh, including the sound card. Uh, this is Ask Me Later. Uh, activating period has expired. Ask Me Later. Pretty fishy. But yeah, the drivers include uh, sound card uh, you have some things that um, monitor CPU speed, CPU clock, uh, everything basically and here is your Windows there is nothing there, desktop background you can select something you just have to install all the drivers yourself uh, with the CD I'm sure you know how to do that. Uh, once that's done, everything should be fine. Like here, this is the hard drive. This is 832 gigabytes, and this is the 100 gigabyte, or um, actually the 96 gigabyte that I created as a test. And uh, you have to format it first, I guess. Um, quick format. It's formatting, format complete close and there you have your 97.4 gigs of space it's an empty drive and it's, there you have your program files and everything uh, it's pretty good I mean everything is set up computer obviously works fine uh, well there you have it this is building a computer you can build your own PC very easily uh, if you have a few hundred dollars to spend you can build a computer that looks better than this you can have Windows 7, you can have any operating system you want, you can do it, you can have uh, several hard drives, several DVD drives, you can have RAID setups with your hard drives, uh, different graphics cards, you can have um, Crossfire or SLI enabled graphics cards. I hope you've learned something today. Uh, if you have any questions about any of this, uh, feel free to let me know. I'll be happy to answer them for you. If you need recommendations on parts or if you want to ask me whether a part you selected is good, you can also let me know and I will get back to you. If you also need a computer built, you can email me at pc at nasmus.com. That's pc at nazmus.com. Let me know what you'll need. I can give you a quote. If you want to buy the current PC that I just built, uh, you can also email me. Let me know. This is for sale. I'm not planning on using this for myself. Uh, thanks for watching.